For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, Wi Fi, small cell, and much more. Comscope. Thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Welcome back to HetNet Happenings. We've got a great show for you today with our guest Richard Edgar, who is the Director of Communications Technology for Imagination Technologies. Now, a lot of people, when they think about imagination, they think about high-end graphics processors, development boards, and things like that. But imagination's also been very active for a long time in the wireless IP area as well. Richard and I are going to talk a bit about imagination's work with the 5G Innovation Center at the University of Surrey in the UK, as well as how these next-generation mobile networks will overlap with the Internet of Things and mobile video delivery. That's coming right up, but first I wanted to take a look at what's trending this week. First up, I mentioned 5G. This week, Huawei, a big-time Chinese equipment vendor, laid out its goals related to 5G. Chief among those goals is carrying out 5G test beds with industry partners as early as next year. Now, earlier this year, Huawei showcased sub-6 gigahertz 5G network prototype during Mobile World Congress Shanghai. Now they're looking to build on that by conducting some of their R&D in partnership with Ericsson and Qualcomm. Speaking of 5G, many industry watchers expect small cells to form the foundation of the ultra-dense networks that 5G will likely include. The small cell forum recently held its 30th plenary in Rome and came up with a few plans related to integrating HetNets as part of establishing 5G standards. Specific working groups will take a look at license exempt spectrum, virtualization, neutral host multi-operator cells, enterprise adoption, and how all of that figures into 5G. Finally, some more 5G news. As I mentioned earlier, Huawei is aiming for a 2016 testbed. At the same time frame, Verizon Wireless is working toward domestic testbeds at their innovation centers on either coast. Verizon announced that time frame two weeks ago during the CTIA Super Mobility Show, and since then, their major competitor, AT&T, has expressed a little bit of skepticism. AT&T Mobility CEO Glenn Lurie said the wireless industry is good at over-promising and under-delivering. He also cautioned that conducting trials ahead of a 5G standard is a risky move. So lots of 5G news this week, and it's a really hot topic in the industry. So with that, I'd like to introduce our guest, Richard Edgar, who's joining us from his office in the UK. Richard, thanks so much for joining us on HetNet Happenings. And as we get started here, I mentioned earlier that Imagination is well known for some of its GPUs, creator boards, and other products. But I wanted you to give us a high-level overview of Imagination's work in the wireless space. Imagination has been providing the Sigma product line now for close on 15 years. Originally, we were providing broadcast IP, so we were doing receive, broadcast receivers. We then started to develop uh, radio IP, and currently we're the number one supplier of DAB radio IP in the world. And over the past three, four years, we've been introducing um, short-range wireless. So we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. We're developing short-range wireless based on 15.4, such as 6 low pan and thread. Also doing uh, GNSS, so GPS, Galileo, etc. cetera. Um, and the idea is that we have a complete portfolio of wireless uh, solutions to complement what we do with the graphics and what we do with the MIPS to provide the complete solution for an SOC to go with a third party vendor's IP. So that um, rather than having to go to three or four locations or three or four different companies, they can get all of the things they want from ourselves. We differentiate ourselves from the other IP suppliers by the fact that we have a complete portfolio. And it's not just the range of the wireless standards we do, we also do um, in addition to the digital IP, uh, the baseband, we also have our FIP. So we don't, you don't have to buy the baseband from one supplier and the RF from another supplier. You can supply it, get everything from imagination directly. That enables us to be able to um, provide a complete solution that can be integrated into a single SOC. 
so reducing costs. Um, the market for, for N Sigma is a growing market, and the IoT market is seen as a, a way that we can really grow the market because there's a lot of demand for um, wireless IP to go into such things as IoT sensors. Now, Richard, a big announcement this week involving Imagination's work with the 5G Innovation Center at the University of Surrey, along with partners like Huawei and Vodafone. Can you give us an overview of some of the work that's going on at the 5G IC, as well as Imagination's role? Imagination's joined the 5G IC, which is based at Surrey University. Um, Surrey University 5G has quite a long tradition of work in um, cellular, they did a lot of work in the original GSM and 3G and they developed um, a center of excellence for research for 5G. There are a number of companies involved in that, Huawei, um, Telefonica, Vodafone, EE, um, Samsung and also it's not just manufacturers or companies, also Ofcom are involved. So it's a wide spectrum of companies who all bring a different perspective to the market and the whole idea is to try and develop um, some standards and some re de develop research which can be proposed to standards but the other thing that's happening is that um, they're developing a 5G test bed they have been given a license by Ofcom and the idea is that over the next two to three years they will have a fully working fully working 5G test bed where all the various um, things that are being proposed and thought about for 5G can be tested in a real life environment. With imagination, we're going to be um, contributing not only um, people to, do, to help with the research, also we've got to develop IP that enables some of the ideas to be tested. With our N Sigma platform, which is a highly flexible platform and we can, it's very easy to modify it or add new features to it, we, by providing the platform to the researchers, we can test waveforms, we can waveforms to make sure that they work properly or to fix various things. And the idea is that by using our platform that we provide based upon in Sigma with MIPS as well, the customer will be, sorry, um, sorry, I'll repeat that. Using um, the N Sigma with MIPS, we will be able to provide a platform that enables everybody involved to test um, a fully working 5G network in advance of real deployment. Now, Richard, what are some of the major benchmarks that you're expecting to see between now as the 5G R&D goes on in earnest and commercialization slated maybe in the 2020 timeframe? Um, there were some 60 gigahertz trials done in the UK last year. Samsung did some trials in New York last year. Um, I think that there were some trials over in the over in Japan area um, during the past 12 months. So there has actually been already a number of tests and trials of 5G that's been performed. Now, ultimately, the timescale of 5G becoming available will be driven by the development in 3GPP. Um, and the 3GPP timeline is showing that 5G coming out in 2020. There will be some advanced tests, um, as you say. Uh, Korea are looking to have a 5G network of some description operating in the Winter Olympics in 2018. And I know Japan are looking to do some, um, some form of 5G network when they have the, Olymp the Summer Olympic Games. But Ultimately, we have to do a lot of this testing to be able to make sure that what we get in the market is actually something that works. The test that was done in um, the UK was done at 60 gigahertz spectrum. The tests that were done in New York were, I think, were 29 or 38 gigahertz um, or even both. And it's important that we actually test some of the, some of the ideas and concepts in the new spectrums that we're looking at. But with the advances, and you're seeing advances already with uh, LTE AA, which is looking at uh, using the 5 gigahertz on, on license spectrum, we have new things that are needed to be tested, and we have new techniques that need to be looked at. And we need to understand how that works in the complete network. So 
there are lots of tests and I think Verizon doing a test is really good because having a carrier actually testing in, in whatever sort of scale in real world type deployments helps us to understand what are the use cases that we're trying to do achievable and if not, why? Or is there things we need to do to try and make the use cases work? So all these tests are very valuable but ultimately, we will be driven by a final standard. Now, Richard, I read recently about a 4K video stream test that went on at the 5G IC. Obviously, that sort of combines uh, two areas of Imagination's expertise. So I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about that particular test. They were able to stream a 4K, um, a 4K video over a reasonable range, but it was a test platform. Um, and we're really excited by that because we do believe that mobile broadband showing 4K type solutions is actually going to become a big thing in the future. We see today that there are steps with LTE to introduce broadcast uh, type facilities where they're, they're going to broadcast um, effectively a TV stream over the LTE network um, and we think that that's going to become more and more important. The thing is that people bec are becoming more and more mobile and becoming less and less re reliant on standard broadcast. They want to watch things where, the, where they are and when they are and the only way to do that is mobile. So actually being able to distribute high resolution graphics over a, over a, a network to multiple multiple people at the same time we think is a really big step forward and as we get towards 5g we've been able to do that much more effectively where we can actually look at how to really cope with dense networks and where there is dense uh, information over that Richard, another hot topic that we hear so much about in the telecom industry is the Internet of Things, which uh, obviously exists now, but has a lot of development potential as it relates to these next-gen mobile networks. So can you tell us a little bit about how you foresee the IoT and 5G relating to one another as they both develop? Now, I think over the next few years, it will slowly start to evolve, where various various solutions become the correct solution for various markets. So for example, um, if I'm trying to do smart grids and I'm trying to do a smart grid in the middle of a field out in the middle of the Midwest, then cellular becomes the IoT device of choice. But in the house, I suspect that either Wi-Fi or 15.4, six low pan Zigbee thread, for example, they may, they may well become the device of the wireless standard of choice and effectively, will become um, it will become a mixture of all of those. But it will be it will start to become much more formalised and much more um, structured as to what what is going to be what. So I do think that over the next few years there will be um, a slow evolution where we actually work out what is the right technology for the application. Um, because it all comes down at the end of the day to how people interact. The key device that people will use to interact with the IoT is going to be the mobile phone. So that means that whatever you do realistically is going to have to use either cellular, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth because they are the wireless standards that's on the mobile phone. So any solution that's aimed at uh, the consumer will probably have to evolve around one of those three technologies. All right, Richard. Well, we heard a lot of buzzwords in our conversation, 5G, IoT, smart cities, and a few more. Uh, now, if you'll bear with me, and, and maybe we can do a little speculation, look five or ten years down the road and tell me how all of these different types of technologies are going to fit together, and maybe from an even higher level, uh, tell, you, tell us how you think this is going to transform the way that people live and work. Ultimately, it's about what does the user want? And what the user wants is they want connectivity 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Well, that's not new. We all know that. The thing that we fail to do is to provide that 
across the whole globe. And that's the important step that we have to do. It's whether I'm in the middle of London or whether I'm in the middle of Oklahoma, uh, which I understand doesn't have a lot of wireless, um, it's going to be a case of we need to provide a, a service that people can use and use what they want to do. And if somebody wants to have 4K video and they're in the middle of Oklahoma, we need to be able to provide that. If they're in the middle of London and they want to do an email, we need to be able to do that. And the user's expectation is, I can do whatever I want, wherever I am. And if we can do that, we will have transformed the world because everybody will be connected and that's what the goal has to be. All right, a big thank you to Richard Edgar of Imagination Technologies for joining us today and a big thanks to the folks at home for tuning in. For the latest in ICT and telecom news, check us out at rcrwireless.com and hey, maybe even sign up to receive our daily newsletter to get all those headlines delivered straight to your inbox. For multimedia content, including previous episodes of this program, you can check out the RCR TV website as well as our YouTube channel. In the meantime, we'll see you back here next week for another episode of HetNet Happenings. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.